None of it makes sense. Weeks after three bodies were found in the backyard of a Northland home, there are more inconsistencies tonight. The families now more frustrated and upset than they've been thus far. Welcome to Fox 4 News at 9. I'm Christelle Bell. And I'm John Holt. It was first on Fox 4 last night. The man who lived at the home has moved out. Plus, the fact that there was a fifth person at that home. Tonight, only on Fox 4, we're learning more about that night from that man and his lawyer. Fox 4's Malik Jackson, who broke the story, joins us live from police headquarters downtown. Malik, they're flat out disputing the account of what we've heard so far. John and Christelle, I spoke on the phone with that fifth man, and he said without hesitation he was not the last person to see these three men alive. That is a claim that Jordan Willis's attorney made last night that today he is walking back. The attorney for this fifth man says his client left the home just after midnight, and when he left, all four men were still there. They were still awake, and they were watching TV. It's just a cover up. Something's something's wrong with the with the picture. Jim McGinney, the uncle of Clayton McGinney, is upset, frustrated, and to this point displeased as the story of what happened on that Sunday night in the Northland gets less clear and more foggy by the day. John Perserno, the attorney for the man who lived at the home, has had an evolving story since Friday. First, he said the fifth person was still there when the three men died. He would change his tune in a News Nation interview hours later. Before he fell asleep, they were going to leave. Um, he actually escorted them to the door, said their goodbyes, opened the door. He went back on the couch and he crashed. That statement running contrary to what Perserno told us just hours before. In an exclusive conversation with Fox 4, the fifth man's attorney, Andrew Touch, tells us his client arrived at the home around 7 p.m. He left just after midnight, and when he left, all three men and Jordan Willis were alive and watching Jeopardy. Tal says his client then received a text from Clayton McGinney's fiance and Ricky Johnson's mother on Tuesday inquiring about their whereabouts. At that point, he texted Willis and Johnson. He never got a response. That's another inconsistency. Willis's attorney said his client never received any text, just messages through Facebook. We contacted Perserno about this, and he declined to comment. Man up. Man up and tell us what happened. He knows. He has to know. He's a grown man, too. He has to know what happened. Towns tells us that his client is upset and sad, and he just wants answers as to what happened to his friends. At last check, KCPD is still waiting on the medical examiner to determine a cause of death. Christelle. All right, Malik, you mentioned wanting answers. Have police interviewed this fifth person? Do you know? So we know that they made contact with him in the days after these bodies were discovered. Over the last few weeks, though, they have made contact back with KCPD. But an interview with this fifth person has still yet to be completed. And as for McGinney's family, they say since this all happened, they haven't heard a mumbling word from police. John, Christelle. All right, Malik Jackson live at KCP headquarters tonight. Thanks.